Welcome to Routine Recap Channel. Russia is in turmoil again. Explosions occurred consecutively in Moscow and Crimea. The shockwave was so significant that initially, no one could comprehend what was happening. Furthermore, an event that was both expected by everyone yet currently unexpected unfolded. The plane of Wagner's leader was shot down by Russia. The prominent leader eventually lost his life. Additionally, Ukraine is rendering Russian bomber aircraft ineffective and advancing towards the second line of defense on the front. Things have heated up significantly in the south on behalf of Russia. So, if you're ready, let's quickly review today's news through maps and real images. The first news of the day comes from Crimea and Moscow. Ukraine has taken bold action, striking Russia consecutively. The attack on Crimea, especially, was of a magnitude visible even from space. The shockwave and explosion cloud were so massive that it seemed like a crucial point had been hit. Subsequent information revealed the true significance of this point. In Crimea, Ukraine targeted one of the largest depots where Russia's missiles are stored. Numerous Russian missiles were rendered ineffective, with Russia already facing ammunition shortages in recent days. This latest attack has further worsened their situation. If the explosions at Russian fuel depots and ammunition storage continue, they might soon lose control over the southern region entirely. Additionally, an attack was carried out on Moscow. Drone attacks have been relentless in the capital for six consecutive days. Every factory and key structure in the region is being targeted by Ukraine. While yesterday's focus was the airport, Today's attacks were directed towards areas near the airport. Russian aircraft were targeted as well. However, due to the strong air defense and electronic warfare systems in the region, the drones failed to achieve their objective and hit another nearby building. Nevertheless, these attacks pose a significant threat on Russia's behalf. The consequences of their recent actions are now evident. Ukraine had previously damaged three Russian bombers by attacking two air bases. At least 5 to 22 aircraft have been confirmed as damaged today. Consequently, using three drones, Ukraine disabled five of Russia's colossal bear aircraft. Russia now has only 27 operational to 22 planes remaining, with some unoperable due to lack of maintenance. Around 20 to 22 aircraft are currently operational. This is undoubtedly a significant victory for Ukraine. Moving on to our second piece of news from the South. Following Ukraine's complete breakthrough of the first line and clearing of the area, information about a new operation has emerged. Ukrainian forces have begun advancing beyond the Robotyne region, indicating their approach towards the second defense line held by Russian forces. Moreover, this second defense line is not as strong as the first one. Especially after recent losses, Russia did not allocate any additional reinforcement units to this area. Only the 503rd Motor Rifle Regiment, previously stationed near Nestor Yanka, has been repositioned in the vicinity of Robotyne. This strategic maneuver is believed to be an attempt to bolster the weakening Russian defense in the region. Furthermore, Russian forces are constantly engaging in counterattacks against Ukraine without respite, which has forced them into a continuous state of warfare. This situation leaves Russian forces both uncoordinated and under the burden of heavy fatigue. They have no choice but to retreat. There is no alternative. Reports also mention the presence of the 22nd and 45th Spetsnaz brigades behind the first defense line, likely indicating their deployment to the second line. These Spetsnaz brigades were responsible for launching counterattacks against Ukraine's significant advancements which would pose a potential disruption to their operational effectiveness. Now, Ukraine's objective is to eliminate these units positioned behind Robotyne and proceed to new cities. While the attacks are already ongoing daily, the necessary major offensive in the region will likely commence within a few days. Next, our third piece of news involves today's Golden Clash. A Russian aircraft had an encounter with Ukrainian boats, reminiscent of scenes from movies. Both sides aimed to strike each other. The initial advantage lay with the Russian aircraft due to its rapid approach from a distance. The plane executed a swift attack on the boats near the Boyko Towers, which are drill platforms. The boats maneuvered, keeping distance by moving left and right in order to evade being hit. 
In the first attack, they were mostly focused on self-defense and couldn't retaliate effectively. A Russian missile swiftly dropped into the water near the boats due to their agile movement. Subsequently, the plane returned for a second attack, attempting to hit the boats again. However, this time, the boats were prepared as they had spotted the plane's approach. They quickly responded with anti-aircraft missiles as the plane retreated. Due to an air defense missile exploding near the Russian aircraft, it sustained severe damage. It managed to flee in a heavily damaged state to the nearest airfield. Thus, the encounter ended with the aircraft being neutralized, much like a scene from a movie. Another aircraft was lost in the process. Moving on to our fourth news, it shook all of Russia and Wagner. Wagner leader Pregazhin's aircraft crashed in Moscow. Moreover, this attack was carried out by a Panzer rear defense system. Although it is claimed that the aircraft's radar was malfunctioning and that it was detected as a drone on radar, we all know that this is not entirely accurate. Prigozhin had recently defied Putin and attempted to march on the capital by inciting a rebellion in the country. While everyone anticipated the outbreak of an internal conflict, the situation was resolved at the last moment. However, Putin viewed this as an act of betrayal, especially during a televised program where Putin participated. He stated that everything might be forgiven, but betrayal cannot be forgiven. With the situation being this way, it's likely that Putin personally revoked Prigozhin's status. Wagner is now without a leader and has begun efforts to rise against Moscow once again. There are claims of Wagner activities in the Belarus region. They are likely preparing to return to Russia. If things indeed unfold in this manner, Putin's move has somewhat backfired. In recent days, Putin was already working to divide Wagner. He attempted to fragment the forces by assigning specific units in each region to different commanders. Although he had some degree of success in this endeavor, there are soldiers who do not accept this situation. We will see what actions they will take against Russian moves in the coming days. In any case, all of this turmoil is good news for Ukraine's progress. Finally, recent reports suggest that Ukraine's victory might be closer than expected. In a recent article, Jan Kahlberg presented an overview of the general situation by examining the strategic implications of Ukraine's progress and the potential impact on Russia's vital communication lines. In his analysis, Kahlberg challenges the prevailing notion that Ukraine's counterattack has made very little progress. The crux of the matter lies in the geographical and military dynamics of the conflict. Kahlberg argues that for Ukrainian forces to seriously impede Russian forces and achieve their objectives, they do not necessarily need to make substantial advances. A mere 10 miles might be sufficient. It is suggested that by targeting Ukraine's key transportation routes, they could strategically cripple Russia's land communication lines. Referring to the recent liberation of the Robotine village as a significant achievement, given Russia's efforts to strengthen it, from this newly gained position, Ukraine could further advance to indirectly suppress major east-west transportation routes using indirect firepower. As Ukraine's forces approach their objectives, Kahlberg emphasizes that Russia's logistical corridor is narrowing. When Ukraine's rocket artillery systems can target this corridor, Russian leadership faces a difficult choice to persist with operations under relentless fire or consider withdrawal. With the upcoming winter and the potential disruption of the land bridge between Russia and Crimea taken into account, Kahlberg suggests that Russia might be cornered into making tough decisions. This disruption would affect supply chains and place strain on the Russian army. Thus, for Ukraine to secure the South, a bit more progress is necessary. What comes next, we will see together. For now, we've reached the end of our video. We will continue to follow the region for you every day. You can be informed by subscribing to our channel. For now, we have come to the end of our video. See you!